my fellow Americans. Sorry about the way I look. Uh, it's early morning and I've just gotten out of the shower and I'm about to start my day when YouTube gave me this weird video. <laughs> and I will talk about it now. We're going to talk about kind of this weird trend I'm seeing in the, the, the political discussions right now. <music> Alright, so this was a discussion basically about the Republican Party, which like I've said before, I'm not a Republican. They no longer represent my values. I don't really claim any political position other than conservative. Um, and basically, I think the best way for me to describe what I believe in conserving is the Constitution. I believe that that is the best this, this has created the best place and way to live that there ever could be. I believe those are that's based on biblical values. And so I believe I want to conserve those ideas that are behind the ideas that the Constitution has in it. All right. Um, I want to conserve family, the traditional family. The, and when I say traditional family, I don't just mean the nuclear family. I mean like family takes care of grandparents, aunts, uncles. We all take care of each other. I want to conserve that idea that family is worth taking care of, that family is, you know, your first priority. It's God, family, you know, you, the church like that. That's how it is for me. That's as far as I understand things, that's the best I can do. <clears throat> um, you know, that, that I want to preserve that hierarchy. And in that hierarchy, there is a God. Now, is there space and room in there for people who don't believe in God and want to do something weird? Yeah, but that is mainly what I want to conserve. And that's what I am fighting for. That is what I believe in. Like, the, what I want to conserve are these values that people have value no matter what. So I'm pro-human. That um, the Constitution is the best way we have ever created to make the best area to live in like it is just the best it's top i don't think it needs to change um the way we have it now i don't think it needs to change we we are done changing it i believe um, i think we can reasonably look at the laws in there and go okay well no this obviously applies to whatever it is we make next and i've always said that um so that's basically what I want to conserve. I want to conserve the values that I believe are American values that are found in the Constitution, that are found in the Bible, and family. So I think after that, the, I think if you, those are in place, your society will flourish and be fine because that means everybody's getting taken care of. Okay. This lady is talking about you can't make a theocracy basically which means a a religion rules with this either equal um say along with like the king or whoever or it the religion is the rule okay so <clears throat> that in that situation i agree with her i don't want a theocracy but for some reason in this debate it keeps coming up that no you you're not allowed to have a theocracy you're not allowed to have christian values be the values that everyone is judged by and i think let me just let her this it also shows something else let me just let her talk okay and you'll see what i mean policies. He did so by appointing the first openly gay member of the cabinet, which the left likes to forget about all the time. He did support this community. He just didn't do it in a way that was pandering. But again, like I, I'm a liberal because I believe in individual liberty, individual freedom. I'm very concerned with preserving specifically our First Amendment values and, and all the amendments specifically, but the First Amendment's really my jam, which again, 
does not allow for the state to legislate based on one religion's specific values. But if we want to talk about religion, we can talk about uh, a verse from the Bible, which is 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 2, which says, I urge then, first of all, the petitions, prayers, and sessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and for those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. And I bring that up because that is the only place in the New Testament that really touches on the relationship of Christians to government. And what does it say? It says they should pray for the, the people in leadership so that they may live peaceful and quiet lives in God. Okay, so this is someone who does not believe in the Bible, quoting the Bible and saying, you know, you're just supposed to pray for people and shut up, basically. You can't have a, at least that's how I'm understanding what she's saying. I think there's a great fear out here that Christians want to turn America into the, into a theocracy. I don't know anybody who wants that. Okay. I don't, maybe these other people on the panel do since I don't know these other people on the panel. Maybe they do. If they do, I'm just saying I disagree. <laughs> okay. It is clear in the Bible that yes, we are to do exactly what she said. What she said is not a lie. But what is also true is that we're supposed to be involved in the world in several different ways. And one of those, the first one is the Great Commission, and that is to lead everyone to Jesus Christ. The second way is we're not supposed to encourage or allow or just walk off from anything that is unjust. The third way is we're not supposed to allow people to you know, take advantage of the elderly and children and people who don't have good mental faculties and things like that. So we are to be a force in the world. And so because of that, we are going to vote for these things the, the way that Christians see them, right? <clears throat> but for some reason, it seems like Christians doing that, people are interpreting that saying, well, you can't have a theocracy. You can't have a theocracy. Nobody wants a theocracy. I'm not saying Christianity is the way we should run America. What I am saying is that the Constitution is that condensed down form of biblical ideals put into a reasonable law. Okay. So the reason why the state or the federal government or everyone else cannot make a like we can't have an official religion of america and we cannot say you know you could only practice this religion is one of the reasons why is because every time people came from england to america it was to be able to worship god on their own terms that is also a biblical concept in the Bible. There's lots of different places that say you need to choose who you're going to serve. You need to find out for yourself what's true. You need to know what you believe. You So all of this is about choice. All, all of this is. All of this is about you coming to have that relationship with God, right? So if we establish a religion, that's not going to, that's not really what the Bible says to do. Like she does say, we are supposed to pray for people, but we're also supposed to be involved in politics. We're supposed to be involved in culture. We're supposed to be out there telling people what God does. Okay. So I think this is sort of a weird thing where people look at this and go, well, you want to marry, you want everybody to live under Christian values. I would like everyone to be Christian. That's very different from, I want to force my values on someone. Does that make sense? I would rather they become Christian and America become Christian because everybody here is a Christian. Whatever version of Christian you want to be. You want to be a Catholic, you want to be a Protestant, you want to be Methodist, whatever, right? I would rather that be the case than we start just saying, well, this is, you know, we start just saying, well, our government is, is Christian uh, we're going to appoint like a Pope or something like that. I really don't want that. My goal and my hope is that people that I interact with, who hear my voice, etc., become Christian, that they love Jesus Christ, that they begin to live for him. 
because that's going to change their life and then everyone everyone's lives around them it's going to create a more just society it's going to create a society where we don't need things like welfare because people are out there trying to make trying to make money and do jobs with the thought process that not only do I have to take care of myself and my family but then there are people also out here who need help who don't have family and I'm supposed to help them too with my other fellow Christians okay it cre Christianity creates that thought process that everyone has value and so everyone when they need help should get it and I think there's this weird fear out here that Christians are out here to force Christianity on everybody through their law through the law and stuff like that and I think what if you're listening to this or you're watching this and you're not a Christian I think what I'm trying to say to you is basically this I'm not trying to put a Pope as the president or as the Republican or Democrat you know re representatives up there as a Christian what I do want though is for you to become a Christian and what I will do when we come up to um, laws and things like that is I will vote my values just like everyone else everyone votes their values Christians are gonna vote their values ideally in the, like if I'm looking at this in the way where what would I ideally have this federal government would be almost gone the only thing that it would do would be to protect us from outside forces and that's it the states would have all of the um how do i say it? not all the law creation but you know each state would be able to decide what they're going to do much like what happened with roe v wade that's why i like what happened with roe v wade because that is the way america was set up it was set up so that the states could have the laws and then you could go live wherever that state that reflects your values basically you could live in the state that reflects your values instead of having a federal law where everyone has to has to do something even if they don't want to so for example because Planned Parenthood does get federal funding my federal tax dollars went to Planned Parenthood okay I don't like that because as a Christian that means I am helping them you know I'm helping them stay open which means they can they can do abortions and I'm not okay with that if Planned Parenthood really does help people with every all these other things that's great and I want them to continue doing that but what I don't want is them to continue doing abortions right so I don't want to give them any money that's why I don't give them any money now so I think there's like this weird thing and it is entirely possible that there are people who are Christians and they want that they want like the headship to be some sort of religious headship or whatever um, I, I don't think that's biblical I haven't seen anything where that's biblical the only thing that might come close to it is that God gave Jerusalem or he gave his people the Jews a king but God also told them don't have a king that is a bad idea you do not want to reflect the world this way and we can see in a lot of ways why he said that he, he God is not a big government God he is not a God who says well you you're gonna do all these things I want you to do through government through taxes no it, he is a God of personal me to you you to me all right so I don't want this to become a a political how do I say this I don't want this to become like we like I said we put a Pope as a president I don't want that what I do want is you to have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior your to know him personally and to live out those values because those values are the best ones they're going to create a better life for you even if at first they don't you're gonna you might have a little valley but then everything will start lining up start lining up for you and so basically I want this because it's better for you and because then eventually it will change the laws or in my greatest and wildest hopes is that we wouldn't even need the law because people just would naturally be trying to do the right thing 
And then when we see somebody, you know, breaking the law, I guess, and we are breaking what we see as just naturally good, we could deal with them. But anyways, guys, I've rambled a bit about this. I'm really kind of, I'm a little bit concerned about this because I've also seen people come in my comments and say, you know, we should kill people who aren't Christians and we should just take over. And I'm not for that. That is not what the Bible says. God is not okay with that. Um, <clears throat> And this is weird that it pops up in like a conversation about where the Republican Party is going to go and all this. But um, as a conservative person, as a Christian conservative, I guess I, I could say it that way. I cannot throw my head in with any of these political groups. Because really none of them really reflect how I think about things or really how God wants things run. Because God really wants things run very differently from how they're running now. If you read the Bible and you look at how he wants things done. So anyway, I've rambled about this enough. I, I want you guys to really think of, to, if you're one of those people who's like, <clears throat> well, we should have a Christian nation. And that means, you know, we pope for a Pope for president. Really think about that. There are problems with just that one thought. And then there are problems afterwards of how you would do things okay i think that when we sat down and the, our founders made the constitution and we had our declaration of independence and we wrote our bill of rights that gives us these rights and we blended things together i think we did it chef's kiss it's perfect okay i don't think we messed up on that i think we did a great job because of the freedom, because of the opportunity, because of how things, how, how people can come here from nothing, keep their beliefs that they have and just, and just be a powerhouse here for whatever it is they want to be. That you can come here and change your life, be a different person if you want to. I think that is a good thing. But I also, you know, so anyway, I'm going to stop rambling now. Just really think about that. If you're someone who's watching this being like, oh, all Christians just want to pope for president. No, uh, I, I think most of us don't want that. What most of us want is for you personally to come to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and to put your life in that context that you love Jesus, that you want to live your life for him, etc. That's what we want. That is our ultimate goal with anything that we try and do. Most Christians that I talk to, okay. Like I said, maybe people on the panel are that way, but that is what most people I know want, okay. And the government gets in the way of that. Putting the government over anything gets in the way of that. So I want a small government. I want a government that's almost zero, almost non-existent if I can get it. Because it gets in the way of personal discernment a lot of times. It gets in the way of people understanding that the interpersonal relationships that you have, that is how we're supposed to help each other. We're not supposed to go to the government and we're not supposed to go, you know, create government things so that the government can do it for us. And we have lost that a little bit in Christianity, I think, but ultimately that's what we want, right? We don't want Pope for president. We want you to know Jesus Christ and come to the knowledge of him and love him. That's what we want. So anyway, I got to stop now. So I already tried to stop twice. So anyway, have a great day, guys. Remember to pray and read your Bible. And I will see you in the next one, my fellow Americans. Bye.